Hi, I'm Charlie for All Outdoors Guide, and I'm out here in the rain today to talk about something that's really important if you're outdoors in the rain. A waterproof pair of hiking boots, specifically the Vasque St. Elias GTX hiking boots. That's what these are. Um, so first let's talk about the features. These have pretty typical features for any pair of hiking boots that you would see. We've got this nice leather Gore-Tex upper that is waterproofed on the bottom a, le a uh, not leather, sorry, rubber Vibram sole that gives you really good traction. We've got this rubber cap around the toe cap around the front that gives you a little bit of uh, traction if you're kicking with your foot and helps protect your toes a little bit more. And we've got these hook eyelets that make it easier to lace the boots, lace up the boots in, in uh, the way that you prefer. So you've got a, a bunch of options. Now, none of that is all that special or surprising for a hiking boot. Those are features that most hiking boots have. So what's special about this boot? Well, the devil is in the details. So first let's talk about comfort. And the most important thing when we're talking about comfort in a hiking boot is the fit. Obviously that's personal, so this boot isn't necessarily going to fit everyone. But for me, I tried a whole bunch of different hiking boots when I was looking for a new pair. These were the ones that far and away felt the most comfortable to me right out of the box. Now, like any pair of boots, they do take a little while to break in but you can feel whether or not they're a good fit for your feet, usually right when you're slipping them on for the first time, and I found that to be the case with these. So I still wouldn't probably recommend them to everyone. You need to feel how your feet fits in them. I strongly recommend you try them first, but I found these to be a great and comfortable fit for me, and I think many other people will feel the same way. Another important aspect of comfort is, is warmth. What temperature do these boots keep your feet? And that's one of the really, really strong positives of these boots in my opinion. They are amazingly versatile. Now technically this is a three season boot. This is not designed to be a winter boot. It's not insulated like that. And I wouldn't recommend that you take it out on long alpine routes or in very very deep snow for a long time or anything like that. But it still works fine in the winter. I have used this all winter hiking up and down a mountain in the snow and ice for my training and it feels great to me. So if you're looking for a versatile boot that can handle the winter even though it isn't necessarily insulated for winter but still works well in the spring summer and fall i think this is a great boot for you now obviously it's a leather boot so if it's like 95 degrees outside in the middle of summer this is not going to be as comfortable as some lightweight mesh trail runner right and, and that's pretty obvious but with the caveat that this is a, a, a leather hiking boot, I've been really surprised with how warm it keeps my feet in the winter while still keeping me cool when it's a little bit warmer outside. I haven't had a chance to wear them in the full-on heat of summer yet, uh, and I may not. That's typically a time when I personally would, would go for something more like trail runners because my feet get really, really hot. But on warm days, even when I'm working really hard, I've found that these boots keep my feet surprisingly cool at the same time, they keep them warm in the winter, so that's fantastic. Another important aspect of these boots is the waterproofing. As you can see, they're waterproof to a fairly high level. I think it's something like eight inches from the bottom to, to the top of the, the, the toe right here, where the, well, obviously if you go in water any deeper than that, it's gonna come over the end, right? Now, lots of boots claim to be waterproof. How waterproof actually are they? You know, these boots aren't magic. They will wet out, in my experience, after a while if you keep them constantly submerged. So for example, hiking through the snow for hours on end, at the end of several hours of hiking, I will often find that there are some wet patches on top of the boots that you can see. They haven't really wet through to my feet yet, but you can see that they're getting a little bit wet. Not a big deal, never has actually gotten my feet wet at all. In the rain, like this, uh, I've never had any kind of problem at all. I've never even felt my feet being wet, and you can go through, you know, splash through puddles and all that kind of thing. Hasn't been a problem at all. So I've been really impressed with the waterproofing in these. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you want to wear these for hiking, you know, through a river for, for 12 hours or whatever. And obviously, if the water gets higher than this level, then it's going to come into your boot over the top. So they're not 100% completely waterproof unless you add some kind of... Um, you might be able to make them totally waterproof with some kind of gator system. But for what they are, and especially for the price, they are really, really impressively waterproof, and they will keep your feet nice and dry, which is super, super important for comfort and for safety.
Okay, another thing that's really important with hiking boots is durability. How durable are the boots? How long are you going to be able to go before you have to replace them? And that's one area where when I tried other boots, I just, I just didn't feel like they were that durable for the price. Uh, I tried some Keen boots, some L.O. Bean boots, uh, a, a, a Merrill boot, and they all felt just a little bit like they were going to fall apart. Not immediately, but especially for the price, they felt a little flimsy to me. This boot, on the other hand, is feels rock solid. Um, and if you look at it, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks really like it's pretty much just out of, I mean, it's been obvious it's been being rained on right now because I have it outside, but it looks like it's, it's mostly just out of the box, right? It doesn't look that beat up at all. Even the bottoms, look at the bottoms, there's almost no scratching on there. I've been using these boots for months, uh, going up and down rock, going up and down more snow and ice than rock, but a little bit of rock with heavy packs of 50 and 60 pound packs up and down, up and down, up and down for hours on end, almost every week. They still look like this. I, I, I'm really amazed by how durable these boots are. I, I expected them to at least look a little bit more beat up right now, but they don't look beat up at all. They, they still look almost brand new. Um, so really, really, really solid, really durable pair of boots that I, I would not be worried about taking them anywhere. Now the laces, I haven't had any issues with them personally, but I have read a few reviews online where people have questioned the laces or said they had issues with the laces breaking. So if, if you're going on some long committing hike, I might recommend either bringing an extra pair of laces or just replacing the stock laces with laces of your own that you found that you trust. Um, luckily that's a cheap and easy thing to do, so I don't think you should really factor that into whether or not you decide to buy these boots. Because you can always replace these laces with your own, and it's not difficult to do. So the other aspect of these boots that it's important to talk about, and this is the biggest downside, is the weight. Now they're not super heavy. Um, these are a, a, a little over three pounds, I think. And obviously, it's, again, it's gonna vary to, uh, depending on what size you're buying. But for this class of mid hiking boot, you can definitely find lighter options. In fact, most of the options that you're gonna find are gonna be lighter. The super lightweight ones, you might save almost a full pound compared to these. So if you are an ultralight purist, these are not the boots for you. If you are someone who's not a total purist, but you like to shave pounds where you, or you shave ounces where you can, and that's something that's more important to you than, for example, durability, then again, these are not the boots for you. There are other good boots out there that you can, that you can find that may not be this durable, but they're also uh, a few ounces lighter. Now, personally, for me, that's not that important. I, I, I love ultralight gear when I can get away with it, but I would rather have something that's durable that I can rely on that I know is not going to fall apart or break in the field and that I can use year after year, keep the, you know, the value of, of my investment. So for me, that extra weight is, is absolutely worth it. Whether or not it is for you, that's a personal decision, um, but that's probably the biggest downside of these boots. It's just that they're not quite as light as some of the competitors on like the Keen Targi 2 Mid, another very popular uh, boot in this class, is as I think six or seven ounces lighter than these. So that's something to consider if you care that much about weight. I suppose we could talk a little bit about the aesthetics, the design of the boot. Obviously that's not very important for a hiking boot. You're not gonna pick a boot based on the aesthetics of it. But it is worth pointing out that this boot, um, they really do look quite nice. And it's a nice, uh, at least for me personally, I like this sort of more subdued. It's kind of a basic brown. We don't have any light, you know, there's no, there's no orange or yellow on here. There's nothing sort of garish or, or in your face. It's not trying to look um, high tech or advanced. It just looks like a pretty straightforward hiking boot. And, and to me, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not trying to impress anybody with what my feet look like. I just want something that, that kind of looks like this is a tool for a job. And that's what these look like. So that may be something that you want to consider if you're looking for something um, more of a fashion statement boot. I don't think this is that. If you're looking for something that looks like what it is, which is kind of a workhorse hiking boot, these are your guys. So who should buy these boots? Do I, first of all, I, I recommend these boots basically to almost everybody because they're really versatile. You can wear these on a summer backpacking trip. You can wear these on a shoulder season hike. You can wear these on shorter winter hikes. Uh, if it's not, I mean, if it's super cold, I wouldn't recommend it, but most winter hikes, even up here in Maine, I wear these outside, they're fine. So they're really, really, really versatile. They're very comfortable, even with, you know, whether or not, you, whether you're walking with nothing, whether you're walking with a 60 pound pack, um, really still feel quite good. So very versatile that way. And um, they're durable and waterproof and they will last pretty much forever. 
So I think if, if you're looking for kind of a good all-around hiking boot that can handle whatever you throw at it, these are a fantastic option. If you're looking for a very specific type of boot for a very specific purpose, these might not be the best option. For example, if you're only doing stuff in the winter, you're gonna want a winter boot that's more insulated than this. If you are doing something super, super, super light and fast and you need the lightest boot on the market, this is not that. So if you have a very, very specific need, these might not be the best boots for you. You probably already know what the best boot for your purpose is. But if you're looking for all around, handle anything you throw at them, can handle the rain, can handle the snow, and still look this good after months of use, hiking boot. I, I don't think you're gonna do much better than the Vasque St. Elias. So I strongly recommend these boots. Really, really fantastic. And I'm gonna go hiking them.